Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, homework assignment number two today. Uh, uh, for uh, Jonathan asked uh, a few questions. Um, so let me actually go to the reference implementation. Okay, so um, first I'd like to uh, respond uh, to your question, Jonathan, earlier regarding, I guess I, I tried to capture uh, part of your question. I didn't capture anything, unfortunately. Some of the questions are related to how do we design the class, design different class. And the other question is, interesting is that um, what exactly event we need to capture because obviously there are certain event that at certain time so from this stop to the other stop right but what happened in between this two event is actually not being uh has well, uh, based on the homework assignment uh will not be captured so essentially um for homework assignment number two, there is a one assumption that we're actually, we only um, took a few, I would say a few uh, time point when we have the event. So in between event, uh, we just don't have any way to, act, to, to cover it. Okay, so let, let's, let's start with the record. Okay, so record is a class that we try to represent event, right? So you can see that is uh, uh, include a few other base class like a person thing, GPS, uh, JV time. So essentially, it's given the um, the the um, how do I say that the information that we need to capture within the record. Okay. So um, I, I want to actually, uh, no, I want to say this is if you look at the record, the current record event only have a four data attribute is who, what, where, and when. All right, so for where and when is okay because we actually, we look at one particular event. Yeah one particular event. So this must happen in one particular time. Time point, okay. Okay, so if I have a one variable called when, this might be okay. And also we make an assumption that the, wait a minute, why is that? why it changed the color okay anyway the other thing is the location so location is also at this moment we're assuming we're capturing the event at one particular location okay having said that the extension in the future we might be able to create a record which a record which correlate uh, an event across multiple location and uh, times. Okay. okay, this is this is in the future we might actually do that, but at the, this moment we only look at the event with within one location and one JV time. So essentially this two parameter already define both the locality and the time point in the history, right? So that that's that's fine. Well, but this two we need to change it because in any real world event, uh we will have we will have uh, um um we'll have multiple people and we will have a multiple thing to involve. So for example, 
we must have different thing. So we can actually, instead of trying to do just this line is just one thing. And we would like to extend this so it will have a multiple thing, okay? So how do we represent? So the question is, how do we represent multiple things? <clears throat> how do we represent multiple things? So the, the easiest way to use is actually using what we call a vector. Uh, STD, vector, let me actually check the syntax, make sure I did it correctly. So let me just pull it out. It should be, it should be on GitHub, yeah. But I will upload this uh, today's uh, office out. <clears throat> I mean, I should like go to, I haven't done this for a while. So I want to look at the programming class CD. Uh, let me go to person and thing. Wrap, STD, wrap, vector. didn't have any of this. What did I do wrong? Maybe it's not here. This is embarrassing. Give me one second. No, not this one. I don't want to do this. I didn't use any of the things here, so it must be somewhere else. Okay. Or let me see which one I want to have it. Uh, I will go to post the H. Okay, yes, the syntax is here, okay. Okay, so a vector of the type, and the type I have is uh, a bunch of thing. Okay, and then I will say, uh, what things? Okay, so let's actually compare this two line. This line is, I call the original. Which is a way which we already know, we define a class name and then we define a variable name, which means that we can actually declare one thing. And over here, we actually, de we define something we call an array of things. So vector is a C++, implementation of array. So vector is C++, we call a standard library, standard template, and for array of a particular object, okay? So if I do this, I have a way to represent multiple things, all right? I'm going to show you the sample program about what you can do. And the similarly, like a person, person, we, we see we have a multiple person. So this is original. And then I'm going to do STD vector person. Who, uh, sorry, who uh, person. 
Okay, in this case, I can represent multiple. So now we have a record with just four parameter, sorry, four uh, member attribute. Who person, number one. This is number one. And then this is number two. And this is number three and number four. Okay, so if I have this four thing, and then I have a bunch of uh, record, so now, now the constructor, I need to make some change because instead of having uh, a, a record, so let me actually, let me make this simpler. Let's remove this constructor, just have a default constructor. And then instead of say set who, I would just say add who, just add a person. And similar thing here, I would just add. And then with GPS and time, I actually just leave it as it is because it has a four thing. It has multiple things. So in this case, you see that I have all the function I have to be able to uh, do the set value. Yes, Jonathan. Um, or like, did you write the function? Yeah, we have to add the function. Yeah. So those are the member functions. The difference between set who, set what. Set is I set the value to be to be a, a particular person. But the the um the problem is the interface only allowed to have one person. So I can actually do I, I can do another way of doing at who. I can say I can say set who, but in the set who, the interface is going to be vector person. You see the difference between the two? Let me actually make it more complete. This, by the way, this way, the code I write here is already good enough, but I can actually just do this, uh, underscore P, underscore VP vector of people. So this I can say underscore T or I can do this. Set what? <clears throat> Which is STD vector thing. Okay, I, I will talk about uh, the vector on Wednesday, tomorrow. Okay, uh, a more uh, formal introduction. But over here, I just briefly mentioned that the vector is an array or a vector of some type. Okay, so this that's that's the, the syntax. Okay, after I done this at this moment, I, I know I haven't talked about jump uh, dump to JSON. Let's actually uh, not worry about that at this moment. Uh, any question from uh, either Jonathan or or uh, Ruben or anybody online? Any question? What? Right. No. I, there, there. There. I think there was another student online. Is that right? Oh, they left. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> Right, they can they can they can follow the 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 um. <clears throat> okay, so after I done this, so let's try to get a compile. Okay, try to get a compile. Then in the process, I'm going to get a lot of error message, and let, let's try to fix it. Okay, so the first one you can see that is basically say hey. Uh, there is no matching constructor of a record because see what I remove it already, right? I remove it so I don't have it. So let's try to fix this. This is a line 35. Let me go the other window. Okay, so this line is the line that's actually that has that problem. So let's do this. So I will say r1.add who. 
and I would say Felix. Okay, and then I say R1 dot at thing, Swedish meeple. And then I said R1 dot set location. And there is GPS. And then finally, I say R1 dot set time. Set JV time or set time? I forgot. Uh, anyway, I will just assume it's time and then later we can change it. Always rely on compiler to tell me what I'm doing. All right, so now after I've done this, I can I can just do a dump to JSON and then try to print it. Okay, so that's that's the changes. Let's see what happened. Okay, now I have a different arrow. He said no member name at things in record dot h. Ooh, at thing. What what did I do? Oh, I have this. <clears throat> this is record dot h. Oh, it's not at thing at person. It's at who. Sehu, okay, fine. Let me change it here. Uh, at who is right, at what? This is at what? And oh, this one must be at where, set where. And this must be set when, okay. Okay, let's try to get it compiled. Okay, so now uh, when I compile record, it complains saying that, oh, this one is not there. And this few line is because the way I write uh, record.h. So now I go back here. Because I only modify record.h, not record.cpp. All right, so the first one is gone because I, I get rid of this already. Okay, and uh, let's, that's actually, I think I will, I'm gonna have a more arrow because of the rest of the function, I also change it. Okay, so this one set who does not match the declaration because I changed this to uh, set to be a vector. So I'm going to do this. So set who is going to be uh, std vector person and I'm going to call this VP. And then I will say, uh, wait a minute, what do I have in my record h? Record.h is basically say who persons. Okay, this to the who person is equal to underscore VP. Okay, this should take care of that. And then the same thing for set what? STD vector thing VT. Did I call this one VT? <clears throat> No, this one I want to call this VT, okay. And then I will say this, what things? Is equal to VT. Okay, this should help us to take care of several things. Okay, so now we look at one of the things it says, okay, I need to have the function at who, right? And I didn't implement at who and at what, so I have to implement that. So let me first do this. 
By the way, this is the way I usually do the programming. I usually go to the record.h and copy the function prototype. In this case, I have this two. And I will just do it here from the beginning. I don't need this. So I need to implement this two function. So this two function must be have a record and a person P. Okay, I will just write down. I will implement later. Okay, I just put a dummy function here. And the same thing is void record at what things t and then i just get rid of this and then i also say i will implement later so my first object is try to get rid of all the compiler error at this stage uh, even though functionally it's not doing anything okay so i'm going to do this now if i compile Okay, everything is working. Okay, so I can actually start running uh, run the code, uh, whatever, test. Okay, it's actually show me something. Okay, it shows when and where, but it didn't show the rest of the information. Okay, in fact, you can see that it's actually getting the time correctly. It's getting the GPS location correctly, but it didn't give me the things like a thing or, or person. Uh, correctly at this moment. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I want to take a pause. Do you have any question uh, about what I did so far? So right now, what we did is I actually have a record IH, which I believe has a mechanism for me to represent a broad range of event. And I can use this particular representation to represent what happened in each of the uh, uni train stop, okay? Uh, just having what person, what things, um, and um, um, so uh, Jonathan, can you actually, can you repeat some of your question? Because I think this might not address all your question. So all three of the questions? Yeah. So my first question, was about how to implement the classes. Um, I was thinking that I would make a class for everything that's there. So the people, the location, the times, um, the the bus stops, there are the bus line items. But I was thinking that when I started writing the classes, I didn't really know what to put inside of them. So I thought I'd just make one for the people and then just put everything inside it, like which bus stop they got off of, um, what time, um, and then go from there. But I guess I wasn't familiar with the record idea. So um, you show that the record is going to be its own class. Um, so I think I'm going to just, I'm going to make record like its own class and then put, <clears throat> And then just make like time and stuff, like the time, the location, the people also its own class, and then just kind of um input those into the record function or into the record class, which will have a function to actually um take in that information and then mm -hmm. um put it to I guess dump JSON and then okay. go from there. So I think that answer that question was answered. Um so my initial implementation was or my initial idea was not. Um, good, and then my question. Hello, I have to clarify whatever I'm doing here, it's not a definite answer. So, so maybe you have a better idea, maybe your thinking is, is better than this one. This one is, is just uh, a initial thought about what we can do about certain things. Let me actually give you, uh, let me try to give you an example. Uh, you mentioned, uh, so we have a GPS DD here. Okay, this is just represent the, the coordinate about the GPS location, but we have a concept called bus stop. Yeah. And the bus stop is maybe there is a name 
there's other thing we can do. So let me try to uh, uh, implement a different way of a, of a bus stop. And then we can see that we can do a better design of this, okay? So what I will do is this. Um, I will do, let me, let me make a, another class called bus stop. H. Okay. This is bus stop H. And then I will include GPS dot H. So let's see how we can design a class. And then because it's bus dot H, I'm, I'm using GPS dot H as a reference. Uh, I already include gps.h, so I'm not going to include the rest of the stuff, but I directly go into here. <clears throat> Let me copy this part, okay? And what I will do is I define a class called bus stop. And I'm a using a particular uh, construct called inheritance. We're going to talk about inheritance very soon, but I, I'm using a very simple way of doing comparison, GPSDD. So when I do this, meaning that bus stop inherit from GPSDD. So essentially bus stop is, because it's inherit from GPSDD, so it has a coordinate. Inherit everything, uh, so I don't need to do this too. But what I'm doing is I want to give a name of the bus stop. So I said std string name of the stop. Okay, just the name, and then I'm doing. Uh, let me let me get rid of. Let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this as well. Let me do a void set name. STD, CRNG, name. <clears throat> All right, so what I did here is I design a bus stop. I, by the way, I want to change another thing to make it seem simple at this stage. I'm going to change this to be not explicit. Uh, you know what? I actually I want to do this. Let me get rid of this. Just have set up the uh, the GPS uh, location. Looks like this. Uh, in this case, I want to have a bus stop. And I'm having double, double, and I have std string. So in this case, let's let's compare just this two. And I want this two to be protected. What happened? Okay, so let's try to compare this two. So now I have a GPS location like what we did earlier in the quarter. And then now I define a new uh, class called bus stop is inheriting from GPS DD, which is the class above. And in this class, I have nothing else but just the name of the bus stop. And I have to define the constructor differently. You can see that here, the constructor is just one pair of coordinate. And here, bus stop, I still have to initialize as the coordinate, but I also have to provide a name to that. So that, that's the, the, the only things I, I need to do this. So with this, then I can do something different with the original program. <clears throat> 
So let's actually go back to record. Record dot H. So over here, we now have to do something different because now the where is what is a it could be a coordinate, but it also could be a bus stop, right? It could be a bus stop. So essentially what I'm saying is, let me actually copy this. So now I actually have to say bus stop like this. In order to do bus stop, right? So now I have things like this. So let's let's get back to bus stop dot h. Okay, you see that now I have a new class and now I'm actually I'm designing the record differently. Instead of have a GPS, now I have a bus stop. Okay. Now I'm going to post the question to both of you, Jonathan and Ruben. What which design is better? Should I using GPS DD to design as a record or should I use bus stop to design as a record? What do you think? Which way is better? I don't know if it's right, but for, um, if I remember correctly, for GPS DD, did you have a name for the bus stop? I don't have. So maybe bus stop because you actually define the moment to the stop. Right. But, but then I have another challenge. If now my event, my record, everything is about bus stop. So I use bus stop, it makes sense. But what happens if I include some of the non-bus stop, like a TLC, like a Tercero, like in this room, it's not a bus stop, right? It is actually, it's not a bus stop. So, so in fact, this has some limitation because now if I do it this way, my record, Become on one hand become specific to to a particular type of location. On the other hand, is restrict. So the the whole thing I actually want to show you this example is that sometimes it's subjected to see what is the better design. So this is in my in my mind this might not be the best design. So alternatively, what I can do is this. Okay, now I want to show you an, yet another design is I actually, I want to keep this, this particular one. I get rid of this. And what I have is I go back to gps.h and inside gps.h, I add the name here. I call it location name, location, whatever label. Location label, okay? It's a string, right? And over here, I have a one extra function called void set location label. And then this is has to be string. Okay, if I do this, then essentially I can still use GPSDD, but I can set the location label to represent the semantic about that location, not just about coordinate, but have a, have a label to that. This is, I consider adding this location label, it's a, it's a good compromise for us to be able to maintain the general uh, representation of any location, and yet we can actually include some information there. So, so, so I'm not telling either one of you about what is the right answer, but this is the option that you can consider and also the challenge uh, as a programmer, especially after you're into programmer, sometimes we need to make a choice like this to see you know, how you can define the class that can be used in all kinds of situation you want to use. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. What's your second question? Um... 
that basically covers it because you went over the record and you went over um the, the uh, classes and uh -huh. you're going over uh, Jason tomorrow. Okay. So yeah, I will go to Jason. I I I probably won't have time to cover inheritance tomorrow because inheritance is a later topic. Uh, but this example, I will give you a simple flavor to inheritance and its power. Uh, inheritance in object-oriented language is a really powerful tool, but it also creates a lot of confusion about design choices. Okay, later you will hear me uh, uh, compare the trade-off as well. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, so thank you for coming. How do I do this?